Hi, Joe Outram here. And today I want to talk to you about how to include EFT in your um, money mindset upgrade program, whatever it is that you've got going on to improve your money mindset. Now, you might have heard of the emotional freedom technique EFT before, as it's been around for many years. And it's a technique used to help with everything from pain relief to stress or anxiety. But what you may not know, I think you may know, but you may not, is that EFT can also be used to improve your money mindset. And of course, when you improve your money mindset, you are then increasing your chances of achieving financial success. I find a lot of people actually think that if they can improve their money mindset, you know, say a few affirmations, and I'm not criticizing using affirmations because I love using them, but, you know, say a few affirmations and try and remove a few um, limiting beliefs, money blocks, whatever you want to call them, then you're just going to become financially successful. But that's not the case. Improving your money mindset, all it does is create the mindset so that you are not stopping yourself um, in the background, in your unconscious mind from, from going and doing the stuff that you need to do to make you a financial success. Because of course, you always need to take the action and you know you still need to have good business ideas and all of these things and actually go out and do the work. But it is important to create that great base on which to be able to achieve that financial success by improving your money mindset. And like I said, we can use EFT as part of that process. Now, if you've not heard of using EFT to change your money mindset before, or maybe you've not even heard of EFT, then all of this might sound a little bit crazy at first, but just take a moment to think about this, um, particularly if you know about EFT, but maybe not in relation to money. And just, you know, if you take a moment to think about it, you'll just realise that perhaps this is not such a crazy idea after all. Um, I'll come on to EFT in a moment, but in terms of your money mindset, well, it's playing a significant role in your ability, as I've already mentioned, to achieve a significant level of financial success with whatever significant and with whatever financial success, of course, it means to you. It means something different to everybody. Now, if you are, for example, someone who's afraid of, you know, there's never been, there's never going to be enough, um, it, it does become tough to leave behind a status quo that might be keeping you trapped below a certain income ceiling. So that's where you need to be improving your money mindset. So you're not keeping yourself stuck and you can go out and see the opportunities as they arise and then take advantage of those opportunities that will help you become financially successful. So examining your mindset and the motivations around money is necessary when we want to change our attitudes towards money and financial matters and wealth and financial success with all the definitions that you'll put on those. How? Well, I'm going to give you a little five step process for those that know me. You know, I love I love systems and processes and that's how I tend to think of things. So that's how I've broke it down for you today. First of all, remind yourself that where you are today financially, has more to do with what's going inside of you than what's coming in from the outside world. It's what's going on in your unconscious mind that's having a significant impact and a far more significant impact than the stuff that you're reading about on social media, in the news, and from all the other external um, stimuli that are coming in each and every day. Your inner set points that have been created from your early childhood dictate where you are. And realising this puts you, actually it just puts you back in control because you can reset those points. How do we do that? Well, that's point number two. We examine your past and discover the attitudes that you have towards money by looking at the people that were important to you when you were a child. So when I say when a child, typically I'm looking at years not to seven, but, you know, there could be memories that you have for, from slightly older than that that will still be significant. And the people that are important to you, here I'm thinking about family members or other adults who played a role in bringing you up. 
Um, even if they didn't bring you up, often our grandparents have a significant role, potentially because we hear our, even if we didn't know them, because we hear our parents talking about them and some of the stories that we overhear, or maybe we had an interaction with them. But guardians, even if, you know, if we don't have parents, other relatives as well, if they were around a lot, and even our teachers, um, any adults that played a significant role in our lives. And when we're growing up, we grow up bearing witness to these people talking about money or reacting to money. And it's through these moments that you're going to come to understand when you reflect on them, you're going to come to understand where your own beliefs originate from. So, for example, if your parents fought a lot around money, you might be experiencing now some unhealthy emotional reactions to money particularly around spending or maybe debt, depending on how those arguments, um, what they were about that you overheard as a child. And this is actually, it's a little bit of an aside, but it's quite interesting that people my age, so at 40s and 50s, um, we weren't brought up often with our parents talking about debt, but yet we accumulate a lot of debt. And the way we accumulated debt without realizing what was happening and how we were going to deal with it is because actually we didn't have even unhealthy um, memories to look back on around how our parents dealt with debt because it wasn't around for them. Um, so in the UK, it was mid to late 60s when things like credit cards were becoming available. And it wasn't until you know, a fair bit of time later that women could get um, credit facilities on their own without the husband or the father having to um, countersign their application. So in one way, we look at the, yeah, we do look at these memories and they have sometimes a direct in, impact on what we and how we think about money. Sometimes we've then put those um, beliefs that we've got and we over uh, lay them onto other ways that we deal with money that weren't relevant to the original situation. So we're taking some of those beliefs, particularly where debt's concerned, then overlaying them onto debt when they were never about debt in the first place because our parents weren't having those discussions because they didn't have the debt. And that's why I find that a lot of the women that I work with on a coaching basis, they have a lot of negative attitudes towards debt because we were never even told and we never even overheard conversations. But, and I was going off um, a little bit at a tangent there, but back to today's topic, you know, we, we did grow up bearing witness to how people were talking about money. And if they weren't talking about it directly, you know, there would be undertones to conversations that were in relation to money. And we over, um, we, so as well as overhearing, we saw how they were reacting to financial situations. And all that had a significant bearing on our belief system around money. So we need to delve into that past. We need to take that trip down memory lane and work out what we overheard and actually put an adult spin on it. Because at this point, we are operating around money unless you've done some work on this already you're operating around money with a belief system that you know your six or seven year old self put into place i don't know about you but i would rather deal with my finances as an adult rather than my seven year old um self and the belief system that they created so that is a big exercise and it uncovers an awful lot and then the third part of the process is to work through whatever financial trauma you're experiencing right now in your life because it's time to let go of all those negative emotions and the attachments that taint your money mindset and make it impossible for you to succeed now these could be any emotions the common ones that i see around money are guilt and shame and fear but you know you can have things like anger and sadness have a lot of those coming um, emotions coming up for people too but like i said the big ones are guilt shame and fear and it seems to be that everybody um that i seem to work with has at least the one of those that's causing them an issue and our current financial trauma and I, when i say current i mean not just exactly what is happening right now 
that maybe in the last few years, that's a good indicator of where emotions have been playing a big role. And you can start to look at that and just examine the situations and look at what emotions were behind whatever it was that was happening in your life. And then we get to use EFT to remove those emotional blockages and adverse reactions towards money and finances, which is the next step in the process. Now, you can use things as, like hypnosis as well. That works well. Uh, timeline therapy is what I use with my VIP clients. And I find that that actually generates the best and the quickest results. But in lieu of not working with a TLT practitioner, you can, of course, use EFT. And it's great to include that anyway as part of your money mindset work. But particularly so when you are working on this when you're working on your money mindset by yourself because you can you can do it all by yourself you don't need to be working with a therapist or coach to be able to do that now what is EFT well EFT uses tapping along the acupressure points to release the money blocking beliefs and replace them with an abundant mindset so it helps with that process and by applying this pressure to the meridian points, you uh, free the energy trapped by this unhealthy thinking that you've had going on in your unconscious mind um, on repeat since since childhood. Um, particularly, you know, since being an adult, actually, because that's when we've had most of our interactions with money. But, you know, the older they are, the longer that that has been on playing in your unconscious mind time and time again. Now, my intention with this video is not to teach you EFT, although I do teach my clients in my e-courses and the coaching programs. And do you know what? You can learn how to use EFT. I mean, you've just got to type, learn how to use EFT into YouTube or your favorite search engine, and you'll find loads of free videos available to show you precisely what to do. Now, if you look at a few videos, um, you'll find that there's different techniques and do you know what? It doesn't really matter. They, that's what I love about EFT. You can have slight variations. It doesn't matter if you go slightly wrong. You're still going to get the results. So if you do watch some videos and do see people doing it differently, then that is the norm. It depends who's taught them how to use EFT. And in fact, myself, I use a couple of different methods depending on um, if I'm using a script or if I'm just um, just just dealing with something really, really quickly. And then, right, where were I? Yeah, step five. Um, that's to create new financial goals now that you've worked through the negative emotions and experiences. So once you've understood where you are, um, found out where your belief systems come from and looked at, um, had that hunt for those emotions through the current financial traumas, then use the EFT or whatever method you're gonna to use to clear those negative emotions um, from experiences, then you're now going to set new financial goals, new money goals. And that means embracing the positive new you when you are talking about your financial well-being. because once you've released those emotions and the blocks around money, you're then free to think of your money goals in a way that you just wouldn't have been able to think of them before. So if you've written money goals in the past, once you've done this work on your mindset, go back and revisit them because you know what? You're going to want to rewrite them, believe me, once you've done all this work on your mindset. And in fact, it, you should be reviewing those money goals anyway. I mean, I like to plan on 90 days. So every 90 days, have a review of those money goals. So as you're increasing your money mindset and it's not a, you know, one time I'll do all this work and I'll be fixed because it's an ongoing process. But once you've done it, started doing the work, when you're reviewing your money goals each 90 days, you're gonna see an you're gonna see an improvement in your money mindset and you're gonna to want to change those goals anyway because you have a new way of thinking. Now if you are a small business owner then the top five financial um or money goals, whatever you want to call them, are number one, financial freedom. That's your long-term, your ultimate goal. So it's about defining what financial freedom means to you. Then you're going to look at savings goal, then a debt elimination, debt reduction goal. Debt elimination is long-term, debt reduction is what you're going to do in the shorter term to reduce the level of the debt that you have. 
then you work out your profit goal and then you can work out your sales goal so in that order you can work those goals out and i've got them um, a separate video on working those goals out and um free report an ebook if you um an ebook bundle that's to purchase it's only a low fee if you are interested in looking further into money goals but anyway back to the topic at hand so using eft i think what i want you to remember is that you are worthy of the level of financial success that you desire and actually by using something like eft you are um, released to accept your value and worth and it's going to change your attitudes towards money as a whole which is what you want when you are working on your money mindset that is the whole idea so that's it for today that's just why i wanted to run through quickly with you that five-step process so you can start to if you're not already start using eft into your money mindset practices so until next time bye for now